the heck is he doing now? First you're smacking bees and now you're whittling? I told you I wanted to make a snare trap. Did you oh yeah, I guess you did. This is the this is what I have to do. I'm glad you're out here. But I want to show you how to do this so you can learn how to do it on your own. Oh right, yeah, I shouldn't even come out here. I was gonna come in and get you anyway. So anyway, you go into the woods and you find yourself a couple sticks, right? Alright. Now, what I did here, this is called a trigger and a stake, right? This is gonna be staked in the ground, right? And this is just sitting there so that I can tie a rope to the trigger to a tree, a sapling, because they're, they're the ones that flex the most, right? Uh huh. And then I can tie it to there, and then on the bottom, I'll have a noose on the ground so that this will be go under this right here, and this will be tied down here right to the noose and this part up to the tree so when he's in there and when he goes to walk away or walks in it he triggers it boom flies up in the air and he's caught right so what i did is on this piece you, nature it's funny because it's you'll find little little branches that have you know little branches growing out of them that are perfect for a trigger and then you know i just kind of got all the burrs because you don't want it to get caught so much that it can't come off easily um, and then I cut so I kind of carved it down as you can see I put a little notch in here For my cord and I just kind of went around like that and dug it out and the same thing down here because you don't want Whatever you catch to get away whether it's a rabbit or a squirrel with my luck. It'll probably be a skunk and Then we got a problem because I'm not eating a skunk Tom might eat a skunk, but I'm not. No, I would not remember when I did the bean boozle and there was a skunk flavored I remember. Yeah. Also remember that I never did bean boozle. So anyway, you need to have a good knife too for this kind of stuff. This is my buck knife. It's got a little thing here to push your blade back in. Um, I got this for, I, forget, I think it was for being uh, in a wedding or something like that with my initials on it. Um, oh, that's neat. Yeah, it's a little tiny one. I was going to give that to you, Tom. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, so now you got your own knife. Thank you. Dad's is a lot bigger. You're yeah, tiny. yeah. Well, you got to graduate up to the big ones, right? And it's got the same thing. It's got the little lock on the back too, right? And mine comes with a little case, of course. Yours does not. Um, and then I can put this on a belt if I wore a belt. Um, but so we're going to go find a good tree, and you got to have some cord. Got to have some cord. So. Let me. We. You're the outdoorsman here. What? You said we're gonna go find a tree. I'm right. I don't know what sort of we tree to look for. It. You're the outdoorsman. And you can have cord. You could use wire for this. Uh, basically, whatever you have. If you were stuck in the woods and you had no cord or rope with you, then you make it out of vines or or. And you gotta uh, weave it out of your hair. Well, that can't work with me, Tom. Is that some kind of dig? No, I'm just saying something that sounds equally as ridiculous. What? Me equally as ridiculous. All right, so most of our small trees are usually on the edge of our woods in here. I don't feel like going deep into the woods and looking for something anyway. Oh, but how are you going to survive if you don't travel deep into the woods? This is just to show you. This isn't really. We're not really going to try to catch a squirrel today or a rabbit. Well, you could have fooled me. This is just when it, the time comes to it, you know how to do it. When the apocalypse stepped in a happens, hole. When the apocalypse happens, you got to be ready. Understand? Uh huh. All right. Um, watch it. There's toe grabbers around here too. And holes. All right. Um, see, like this young tree right here, but see, this one's a little bit too thick because I don't. I mean, actually, plus it's a wild cherry. I don't want to hurt it. Uh, we'll use that little skinny one right there. We'll use this one. I'll set it up like right in here. This is, see how nice and flexible this is? Yeah. We'll use that. Okay, so. Now, one of the things you want to do 
Guys, now listen, this is the first one I've ever made. I've never done this before. I'm learning along with you guys. But I've done a little research on how to do it. This, this tree is gonna be the engine, right? That's gonna be the trigger. So, let's, let's bend this down to see where I'm gonna tie this thing to. Probably tie it right to, maybe right here. So that means, kinda of want it like right the thing right here. Okay, so I'm gonna put the stake right around right around in here, like this. Now, of course it's gonna be hard to get it in, so find something in the woods to my for me it's easy because I got all this ant infested wood over here. But if you're in the in the woods you find a rock or something to knock this into the ground. Now, I can't go too far because my trigger, oh, see I went too far. So I'm gonna try to move these leaves aside because I gotta be able to to have what I do with my trigger. Did I just cover it up? You might have. Aha. I guess that's another thing you should always remember. Don't accidentally cover up your tools. Yeah. And, uh... Hey, a snail! That is a snail. That's cargo, Tom. See? You find stuff all over the place. Do I look French? Eat. Huh? Do I look French? You can eat them. I know you can. I just don't want to. It's all about how you cook it. Besides, one snail isn't very much. See, that's... I went too deep with my steak. So, I'm going to have to back it up a little bit. And probably just put it in a new hole. Because if you go too deep, the problem's going to be your stick... Like, I should have made this probably a little bit shorter than that. Oh, Joe will be having a field day right now. Yeah, oh yeah, speaking of Joe... Joe chicken out of the challenge. There's a thing, little thing with him right now called paranoia. Huh, I might have to shorten this. Might have to shorten this because see, you want this to set up. Let's see, it's gonna be like this. Hmm. I don't know if that's gonna work like that. So yeah. what's the problem? You don't you don't want the trigger this close to the ground because the, the noose is gonna be tied to this. Uh-huh. Right? So you don't want them to have to drag it. I'd have to make this noose really I guess I could do that. Well, we're going to try it out anyway. This is the first one, right? First one we're ever doing. So, if it's not right, it's not right. Live and learn. All right, one of the first things I'm going to do is get rid of this stuff that could actually catch into the, the noose itself, which would be kind of detrimental to what we're trying to do here, right? That it would. All right. So... This is the whole setup like this. I'm gonna move all that stuff aside. What I'm gonna do here. So I want Tom to be able to get a good picture of it and everything too. You know what I'm saying? Uh sure. Okay. Now we're gonna take our cord. And the first thing I'm going to do is untangle our cord, right? This is, I have 15 feet here. Okay. Now, a lot of people know how to tie a bunch of different knots. I'm going to show you a basic one. That's a figure eight. See it? Figure eight. Better not be a drone bird. Then I'm going to put a half hitch on, them, on there, right? This is my noose I'm making. I'm gonna wrap it around the other one 
go like this and put that knot through there like this right see it you see that Tom I see it right Here, put your hand there. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, see how it goes up? Or you could do it, you can do it a whole different lot of ways. You can actually put it so that it's uh you could just make a, a let me show you a different knot for this too that you can do. Instead of that, you could do this. Well, I'm going to try to, now I'm going to leave that end on there. I'll do it on the other end. It'll be easier this way. So what you're going to do is just take, take it like that, right? Make a little loopy in here. Like this. Right? See that? Uh -huh. Just a little circle. Take this end, go through the loop. So now, there's your, there's your noose. See it? And it'll, it'll cinch up. It's so, certainly a snare. Okay, so we're going to make this about, about so big, like that, right? Maybe a little bit bigger, right? Maybe like, like that. Okay. So now I'm going to tie this end here to the bottom of this. This is going to catch like that, so it's going to be probably going about. Okay, so grab this right here. And I'm going to cut that. Now I am going to tie this on here. Now you can tie it any way you want to. I'm doing it my favorite way to tie it, which I put a little knot there, go around here like this, go like this, through that little thing there, and then it'll cinch up, it'll cinch up right on that, see? There we go. So that this will go like this, right? And this will be like that. So then when it goes up in the air, cinches it up see okay and you want to make sure that they're and any little sticks and stuff like that are out of the way because if not like I said that can actually mess up mess up your uh, your uh, your noose it gets caught in the noose and then there's a then there's a space and then the the animal that you're trying to get can get away so now you gotta pull this down this I'm going to tie this to right here but don't forget you want to make it big enough that it's okay it, it's got to be strong enough to pick up about what two to three pounds maybe what would you say a squirrel is uh maybe maybe two pounds maybe upwards of four I don't know Gotta be careful with a sharp knife too. You don't want to cut yourself, especially if you're out in the wilderness, right? That would be no good. Okay, so now, let's try to, uh, this could be, this could be the most biggest problem of all is doing this part. So I'm using my armpit. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with this. I'm gonna make a little knot on the end, wrap it around here. Remember where I put that little groove in the stick? I'm gonna put this around like this. So that it's gonna cinch up nice and tight. It's harder to work like this when there's a branch under your armpit, just saying. I imagine it would. See, this was perfect because it also had like this little group of branches coming out here. So it was, 
there we go nice and tight now right okay so I'm going to I don't want it to slip and go right in my face, you know what I'm saying? That would probably hurt a lot. Now, you're saying, how does it, how does the animal get this, this noose trapped on him? Right? That's what you're saying. Well, I'm going to tell you how you do it. I mean, you're the one hearing voices. Huh? What? I'm going to show you how you get an animal to actually go in there. I mean, what's the chances of them just walking across that? And do... Probably pretty low. Right, so what I'm going to do is make it a little bit more enticing. I'm going to find... What do squirrels eat, Tom? Uh, if you acorns? Want to... They'll eat bread, too. You can put bread in there, right? But, um, yeah, acorns. Acorns would be the, the natural thing out here, right? Hmm. They love mulberries too, but the mulberries aren't out now. I'm like so, you can give up mulberries. Oh, here's an acorn right here. Here's one right there. I'm going to find a whole bunch of these, and I'm going to use all them rocks that are sitting right there too. Rocks? Yeah. Why rocks? Huh? I rock. No, why that, rocks? That's next to Iran. No, why rocks? Oh, I'm going to set it up, the noose up in the air, so that actually when he steps in, right, if he doesn't trigger it stepping in, Hopefully he'll trigger it stepping out where he'll, it'll, the rope will get caught on his foot and... Okay. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna find out some acorns. We usually, oh that's right, I cut them trees down. Try to find a tree that's like an oak, right? There should be plenty of them laying around here. You know, when you don't want them, they're all over the place. Yep. Oh, they're just little tiny ones, look. Wasn't a good year for this tree. Doesn't seem like it. Man, they're little baby acorns. We need to find some nice size ones up there. And you could think to yourself, why would they come eat these acorns when they could go in the woods and you know, well, you're talking about a whole pile just sitting there. And right? you may ask yourself, why do I do these things? And you may ask yourself, where is that large automobile? <laughs> And you may ask yourself... And you may say to yourself, this is not my beautiful house. <laughs> or my beautiful wife. And the days go by. <laughs> Water flowing underground. That's a tube one. Tom, you're not helping me, Annie. <sighs> I mean, again, you're the outdoorsman. You know what you're looking for. Right, I don't. On. Let me go in here. I'll meet you around the other side. That, oh, okay. I guess we're going this way. Oh look, it's a wild beer. All right, you know what, I'm just gonna show it a handful. Anyway, you, you try to find as many as you can, guys, right? I got, I think this is enough. Just, because it's just to show you guys. We're not really gonna leave this out here. We're not to that. Point that we have to worry about this. So we're going to put these right in the middle. Like that. Okay, you know what? I want to cut that little... I don't like that. What did I do with my knife? Did you put it in its case and then in your pocket? I did put it in the case. That's right over here. See? It's camouflage. Yeah, why, why did you get a it's camo camouflage. case? I couldn't see it. You should always leave it in your pocket. There's a locket in my pocket. Anyway, guys, so I want to just cut this thing out way right here. Because that one could be trouble. That one could be trouble. And that one could be trouble. And this one, I don't like them. It's got a bad attitude, so he's coming out too. All right, so we got that part done. Here's the next part, guys. Let's 
And here's the thing. This is where you gotta be really careful because you don't want to trigger this thing now. So we're gonna put it like that. I think that's pretty good. What do you think? Get that leaf off of there. Sure. I'll say it's good because I don't know what else to say. It's starting to rain. We gotta get this show on the roof. Oh, I got the perfect thing to show you how this works. You do? Yeah. I'll be a minute. Uh, okay. You better hurry up because I can hear the rain. Hey, I mean, really, does, does he think this is going to work? It's, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I've, I kind of feel like I learned something. It looks silly. And like, there's something you almost expect in like a cartoon. Like, oh look, it's a pilot, like, Where's the Acme bird seed and like the firework? Yeah, I made this earlier. Like a cannon. You made it? Yeah, because I wanted to show you. What is it? Huh? What is it? It's a rabbit. That's the weirdest rabbit I've ever seen. Well, it's not a real rabbit, it was a frog. I turned him into a rabbit. For just to show you. So a frobbit? I found it up in the attic. It was one of your old Beanie Baby things. Okay, so here's oh, the that's whole what those wound up. We're gonna do it with a rabbit because I didn't have anything. That Are those like duct tape vampire fangs? No, he just he just got a little corner of his mouth there. Anyway, so the the rabbit comes along as I ooh ooh ooh. What's that? Is that fresh? Well, for a rabbit, we probably put some lettuce out here or carrots. Yeah, acorns are a squirrel thing. Like, Hmm, that looks a little suspicious to me. So he gently walks over it and is like, mm, 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 mm. Ooh, I like these nuts. So then he's like, mm, I had my full. Then he walks out. See, the only thing with him is that he's not going to really catch it too much, but he's going to go like this. And then hopefully it's not going to work like that. So. He's got it all tangled up, and he pulls it. Huh. And then he's right there. Well, we got him. We got him. But uh, I think we have to set it up higher. You know what I mean? Like the, I think the noose has to be tighter to the ground. Probably. That's the concept of the whole thing. We're having rabbit for dinner. But see, I think the whole the whole thing was, is first of all, we need a stronger tree, right? Maybe up higher. The, I, I kind of think that maybe if you just pulled the tree, like if you had less cord and you pulled the tree down oh, more. You mean like even like even went down like this? Yeah, and, and like, like put the string like close to the end. Yeah. That would have like yeah, really snapped it that up. That would work because I and, and I think that the, this is too much. Yeah, there's definitely. Yeah, so I could I could too much I could make this definitely like shorter like this. Yeah, that's that's what I think the problem was. Anyway, you guys get the gist of the whole thing. Um, well, you ready to cook them up, Tom? Gut them? I skin them. That's a stuffed frog. I like mine. Cold and wiggly. <coughs> oh, God. Okay. I had to do it. Anyway, guys, the line is warm. That's how you you can make it. It's warm and wriggling. Oh. Yeah, that, dang. If I, if I can muster up enough phlegm, I can probably do it, but I, I anyway, can't right now. 
that's how that's a basic snare trap I could uh, this one could actually work a little better um, you could figure it out I, that, that's the thing about this kind of thing you got to kind of like do it and adjust and, and little tweaks here and there to make it actually be perfect I would think a bigger tree than that would actually for that for that one that I just made a smaller stick for a trigger right like that groove should have been well, up see, here's here's the thing I I think that like all the stuff you had was fine you just had too much cord and you didn't pull the tree down enough yeah yeah definitely and I could have tied the bottom string up higher and I think that that would have been fine I also think a higher tree would have worked a lot better which there's plenty of them around I just didn't want to go into I don't the even think that them. much I think that that tree is actually probably the perfect size all right, quit arguing with me I'll throw the bunny at you all right well so much for me showing a little bit of interest in this stuff well no you got no but see you should be good at this kind of stuff because it's kind of like engineering stuff and you always like that stuff well yeah so uh i'm gonna wind up taking that cord down don't don't worry guys i'm not leaving trash out here or maybe i'll leave it there for when i want to actually i was gonna say it's not trash it's a reusable survival tool get a squirrel tom's never eaten squirrel but see we can't show all that on youtube or else it get demonetized so well yeah so guys that's how you do a snare trap hope you like this video until next time grab yourself something cold to drink put your feet up relax we'll meet you at the lounge i'll be honest i thought it was actually kind of interesting i don't think i'll ever use it but still you don't know tom it's just it's better to know it and not use it than where was i going with that than to not know it and use... i know what you mean yeah. let's, so, let's just go back so, inside before the rain picks up I'll work on the next way to trap animals too. I'm sure you will.